All right, now we're joined by Melissa Westbrook, who is going to uh, tell us why to vote no on Seattle Proposition 1. Uh, so go ahead, up to five minutes, and tell us why to vote no. Um, good evening, I'm Melissa Westbrook. I'm the moderator and writer of the Seattle Schools Community Forum blog. Um, it's the most widely read, read public education blog in the state, and I've been a public education advocate for over 20 years. I urge recommendation of no on the 2018 Families Education Preschool of Promise Levy. I came to this decision with sadness because I've always supported this levy. But the current levy is a fairly radical change from previous ones, not to mention it's not just a renewal, but a larger cost renewal to voters. My first issue, the uh, Families and Education Levy will cost the median Seattle household $248 a year, up from $136 a year under the two previous levies, the present levies rather. Given housing prices, we need to think about seniors and low income taxpayers. With a large property tax increase already on our tax bill from the McCleary uh, decision, I question a dollar increase and an expansion of the levy. And Seattle Schools has its own two school levies coming up February 2019. And I worry about four large property taxes and there might be voter fatigue. It would be catastrophic for the district to lose one or both of its levies. Second point, about pre-K, I don't argue that pre-K isn't a good thing, it's a great thing. But the city was funding pre-K under its original families and education levy prior to its own separate pre-K levy passed in 2014. In 2014-2015, pre-K was 25% of the FME levy for a year, which was 8.4 million. Its own levy in that year, the amount was 14 million. Those two totals are about 22 million. But now, with it rolled into the families and education levy, it'll be 56% of the levy, which will be $53 million a year. So $53 million a year versus 22 is, is quite a large jump. K-12 will only see 36% of the levy at a little over $32 million a year. As well, the growth of pre-K is predicated on space. In Seattle Public Schools, space is at a premium, and not every new school will have pre-K space. The city gets space for free in Seattle Public Schools. And so if they need to pay for space, where are they going to find it and how will they pay for that? Three, the city has been unclear about whether they will continue to support in-school family support workers as part of the K-12 portion of the levy. As someone who volunteers in a Title I school, I cannot tell you how important it is to have an in-school family support worker supporting low-income and immigrant families. Families count on the staff to be in the school, not outsourced off-site. Number four, there is no language in this levy that says that the K-12 dollars can only go to Seattle Public Schools. It means that any charter school that would want to apply for the dollars could access them. I had a lawyer, Summer Stinson, who specializes in public education, check that language and she said there is nothing in the levy language that she sees that protects those dollars. The actual wording in the levy is what counts, not what city officials try to say that there is. And if you recall in 2012, the city of Seattle by a large majority voted against charter schools. In October 2014, the levy, uh, 14, the levy Oversight Committee, chaired by Tim Burgess, suggested that charter schools have access to the levy dollars. Given that early, and earlier this year, Green Dot Charter Schools was able to get an illegal zoning departure from the city for one of their new schools. The city did not follow its own code and include the Seattle schools. The Seattle School Board sent a sharply worded letter to the City Council asking them to please not do this, to follow their code, and then when Green Dot had wanted another zoning departure for their high school, uh, they dropped it immediately. I do want to note that I do support the Promise program for any Seattle public school graduate, whether they're a charter school or not. These are my reasons for believing the levy should be voted down and that the Mayor and the City Council should regroup and present a levy that voters can feel good about. And please note that anything I say is data driven and I would be happy to share with you any documentation you would like to see. Right, thank you. So now we'll have to follow up questions up to two minute answers from me. We'll start with Robert. Yeah, thank you for that. That was really insightful. Um, I was actually gonna ask about the very last part of it. Um, I mean, you've been around a long time and know the city really well, know the district really well. Uh, in the event that this levy were to be voted down this November, uh, was likelihood that the mayor and city council would bring one back, for example, at the April ballot to address some of the issues that have been raised. So they could bring a new families education levy that might be, have, not have these flaws. Well, 
I mean, I, I can't speak for the mayor or the city council. I, I think they care deeply. I, I know they want the programs that they are supporting right now to go on. I, I believe that they would probably listen to voters, think about what it is that maybe the voters decided to vote it down on and, and change it somewhat. Um, and of course, that's an entire plausible thing to do. Great, just for questions. Yeah, uh, when uh, Tim Burgess was here earlier, he said that the budget was increased for family support workers. And I know that the need for those with Seattle's more than 3,000 homeless kids. Um, and and you're saying that, that it's reduced. I, I, well, I'm yeah. saying that the money that's going towards K-12 initiatives is yeah, being right. reduced. Um, maybe within that, they're, they're increasing the budget. He probably has access to information I don't have. I have both um, of the mayor's plans here. I don't see any data like that that is that specific to any one portion of um, the levy. Right. So I could not answer that question. David? So, so <clears throat> If, if uh, uh, what alternatives do we have uh, if we want to see um, a uh, relatively quick uh, um, expansion of pre-K uh, for the children of Seattle? Well, you know, the issue is, is that I believe they're trying to roll it out at a very quick pace. I'm not sure I believe that the city's ready for that kind of expansion. It is what needs to happen, of course. And, and maybe it would have been better if it had been started earlier. As I indicated, they've already been paying for some preschool out of the original families and education levy. So it's not like the city hasn't been there. But like I said, that growth has to do with space. And I can tell you from Seattle Public Schools, there is no room at the end. There is almost nothing left. The city has come into every building they can come into and one of the new buildings that just got uh, opened, um, I believe it was at Loyal Heights, they don't, they didn't have any room for pre-K, even though the city wanted it. So, you know, my thought is the city could go, could probably maybe put some preschools in the community centers. There's an air, a space that they own. But beyond that, I would think they would have to rent or lease space, and that's gonna cost money, and I don't know where that would come from. Disney. What happens if the initiative fails to the 1,700 kids that we're currently funding? And well, as it turns out, they have at least a million dollars in reserve from the original families and education levy. So I, I would think that that would probably at least keep that part of it going. Um, I, I know that's got a reserve. I don't know how much of a reserve there might be in the actual pre-K levy. There, there might be more dollars there. Um, I doubt, I have to tell you honestly that I think that the city cares so much about pre-K that they would find a way to keep it going until that they, until they could have another election and pass it. Can I follow up? Um, um, should we risk doing that? Well, here's the thing that I would say to that. And I, I've heard this so many times over the years, is that it's for the kids. And that's a very easy thing to say, but part of for the kids is that we make sure that the public dollars that we give to the school district and to the city are used well. And I wouldn't say they're, they're being ill used, but I would say that I think the city is taking on too much with this levy and that they're not, they may not do anything particularly well. And I'm not sure that trying to, again, rapidly expand the pre-K when you don't even know where you're going to be putting these classrooms is, is really a good idea unless you could answer that question. Uh, Jason and then Robert. So I'm new to this issue and I don't fully understand <coughs> how the city disperses money to the schools or to the preschools. Mm -hmm. I have the impression that there's an application process and so my question to you is, even though charter schools may apply for the money, mm -hmm. if this is true, does not necessarily mean that they would get the money. There's That's still true. an application process. Well, you know, it would for, so there's sort of two questions in there. Um, the city, if you're talking about the families and education money that goes into K-12, um, 
yeah, the city disperses it based on what they're funding. For example, the Families and Education Levy funds a health center for every comprehensive high school in the city, which is a really great thing. Um, but the other issue that you were talking about, I, applying, this is new ground. I don't know exactly how charters, I don't know that they would need to apply. They would just come and say, hello, we're a public school. We would like a share of those K-12 dollars. That's unanswered. And, and mainly because the city, I, I tried very, I went through several of these um, outreach things. I could never get anybody to answer the question about charter schools. And it's my belief that some people don't want to address the issue because they know it's a very difficult issue for Democrats. And so they try to shy away from it. But the, the issue with Green Dot Charter Schools getting the zoning, zoning departure points to me that I believe there are people on the city council that are quietly trying to push this along. And that's fine. I just would like everybody to be open and clear about what they're doing and why they're doing it. So on that uh, topic, walk us through what some of the problems would be uh, if the city gave money to charter schools. Right? Why is that a bad thing? Well, as I said, I think that Seattle did vote against charter schools in an overwhelming, not overwhelming, but a large majority. Um, and there has not been a plethora of them opening here. So it's a little confusing to me, you know, why this is so important. But the main, the main thing I would say is the city is cutting back from the majority of money going to K-12 to the majority of money going to pre-K. That's fine, that's their prerogative. But if that K-12 pot of money is now smaller, it will get even smaller if charter schools ask for whatever share they believe they're entitled to as a, a public school. So I think that Seattle schools would find themselves you know, wondering, okay, what is it that we're getting funded because we, we can't make any determination about dollars that we've had in previous years. So I, I think that whole issue is gonna be turning things in, in inside out and forcing Seattle schools into a, a more difficult kind of situation to figure out financially. Additional questions? Okay. Uh, I'll just add something. Uh, from the League of Women Voters study on this issue, um, we understand that there's about $12 million $12 million of underspent. Oh. And uh, I'd like to ask, uh, what role is standardized testing and data collection playing in this, perhaps? Well, you know, initially, I think the city just wanted to, to, to shore up and help the public schools. But then a lot of voters said, you know, okay, what are we getting for this? And, and, and how do you know? that the money, you know, it's a, it's a really wonderful thing to give money to schools, but you know, a lot of people today want to know, want to see some data, and so the city decided one of the better ways to do this was to start looking at standardized test scores. And, you know, I, I think they're useful for some things. Sometimes it's very hard to measure a child's well-being from having a middle school, after school program that's funded by the city on a standardized test. That's a more difficult thing to, to figure out. And so um, I, I don't necessarily agree. I, I wish they would use other measures. I can't fault the city, though, for trying to be responsible for to taxpayers and trying to show outcomes in some way. I mean, one, one thing about pre-K that's interesting is um, there's this fade effect, unfortunately, by like second or third grade, kids who've had preschool that, and it's helped them, that starts to fade out. Um, I, I guess the whole moral is is that you need quality education, pre-K all the way through grade twelve. Additional questions? Time for a few more. Sophia, I guess I don't know if you actually would know this, but um, I, I'm just remembering that um, Tim had said that they that there was going to be a shift in support from sort of basic education. Um, trying to figure out the withdrawal support from sort of what's defined as basic mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. um, to pick up um, other needs. Sure. Um, but at the same time, there's a significant increase in the levy. Um, right. I'm trying to, I'm sort of, I guess I'm sort of trying to think of now how exactly that, that's being <coughs> balanced with the understanding of that. If there's sort of a decrease in, in the spend in one area, um, what exactly is the, there's such a large increase in the spending coming well, from? Well, I mean, they're, they're, 
clearly spending more money on pre-K. Um, the mayor has brought in the Promise uh, program, which I support. I think it's a great, but you know, you have to have money to, to do that as well. So you're bringing in money that way. You need to have money that way. And they lessen the amount of K-12 money that they're going to put out. Um, and in, in some ways, I, I can understand this. They may think, well, legislatures put more money into the schools, which isn't actually necessarily entirely true. But it's, it's easy to say, legislature's putting more money in the schools. How about we just do some core things that we've been doing, like the health centers, uh, like after school programs, like summer school, um, all good things. But they decided to really ramp up on either side, pre-K and higher ed, and that's where they're asking for more money. And they're trying to do, you know, a really comprehensive thing. I just am not sure that that they're equipped to, to do all of this and do it well, especially since the pre-K program is so young and they're now they're gonna start and build on to the Thomas program. Additional questions? Time for a couple more. Jason? Um, is the current levy that we're using, is, is that considered being used well? I think it would depend on who you, who you ask. Um, you know, if, I, if you were asking me, I would say, sure, probably. Um, it's, it's really brought in so many things that the school district had to set aside. I mean, you would think that the school district's responsibility would be summer school, but they decided they couldn't afford that anymore. So the city is paying for that. They pay for mostly kids who need the summer school, not as summer school to go, you know, take a class that you might want to avoid during the school year. Um, but uh, you know, I, I, I wonder. I have to wonder sometimes about the levy oversight committee not always being listened to. I recall going to one of these meetings where they were talking about this and two members of the Le Levy Oversight Committee were there and they said, well, what is our role gonna be in the levy? And they said, well, just stand up for it. And they said, but you don't want us to talk about the levy's past or anything? No, 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 just say, I was quite surprised. And I wish that that, that meeting had been recorded because that was a very startling thing to hear because the two committee members were people who I know to be longtime members, at least a decade would have a lot to offer in terms, and they would be great people to ask that question. Any additional questions? All right, I'll ask the last one. So, um, any levy of this size is gonna have some problems with it. Mm -hmm. Convince me that it's there are enough issues with this levy that it should be struck down completely. Well, um, as I said, I think it's overly large. I think it's very overreaching for. Um, well, it, you know, here's the thing to say. Education is not really the city's responsibility, and yet the city wants to take on more and more of that. I don't know if that is some kind of direct criticism to Seattle Public Schools. I don't believe that they're equipped to do all these things well. I think, as I said, the pre-K program, that's a lot of money. That's more than doubling the money that they're spending already, and they don't have the space to do what they need to do, and they have not explained how that's gonna happen. Um, you know, and, and, and the issue about the charter schools, I, I just find it disingenuous. I don't understand why the city council would not be clear about this, why the mayor wouldn't be clear about this. Again, if you, you have a stand, you should be direct about it rather than trying to sneak it in. Um, you know, again, as I said, it is important. I mean, uh, I write a public education blog every day. It is important to try to help kids. But again, we have limited dollars. And my one of my biggest worries, though, as well, is just that this city puts their hand, we put our hand up for everything. You know, Seattle people, we get knocked for being 
not this and not that. Well, the superintendent last night, Superintendent Juno said, you guys don't know, you pass your levies. You don't know what it's like to live in another state, in another city where people won't pass the levies. But I also know that we are gonna have, now if all of this passes, you know, four more major hits to people's property tax. And then some people could lose their homes because you decided to do this. I want to see a levy that seems to be reasonable and manageable and something that I feel good about. I don't feel good about this levy because I'm not sure I believe that they are able to carry out each process and do it well. All right, about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Um, I'm hoping that um, citizens of Seattle will consider what I'm saying about the levy. I, I think that it's flawed and we know that they can go back and redo it again. And that's what I, I believe needs to happen. And I hope that voters remember that the school district levies are coming in February and it would be catastrophic to lose those. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.